2.1, giving 110%. Perform conversions and calculations involving percents. To convert a percent to a fraction, we drop the uh, percent, supposed to say percent sign, and use the percent number as the numerator of the fraction whose denominator is 100. So we're going to convert each percent into a fraction in lowest terms. So in lowest terms is a fancy way just to say simplify. So what that means is after we find out the fraction, we need to simplify the fraction. So if we have 42%, it told us that we drop the percent sign and put it over 100 because that's what 42% is. It's 42 parts out of 100. So 42 parts out of 100. Now we need to simplify. Since they're both even, we can divide by 2. If we divide by 2, we get 21 over 50. And we can't keep going because 21 and 50 have nothing in common. So there we go. That is 42% as a fraction. All right, so 37.5%. So we don't work with mixed numbers. That's what this is. This is a mixed number because it's a fraction and a whole number. So we don't work with mixed numbers. So what we do is we add or multiply then add. So let's bring this down and work with it. So 37 and 1 half. So what we do is we multiply, then add. So the first thing we do is we multiply 32 times, sorry, 37 times 2. So 37 times 2, we get 74. And then what we do is we add 1. So we get 75. So that'll be 75 over 2. So 75 over 2 is the same thing as 31 and a half. And then now what we do is we have to figure out what is this as a fraction of parts of 100. So what we do is, because remember this entire time this has a percent. So what we do is we drop the percent and put it over 100. Now, this looks horrible. This looks so nasty. Let's rewrite this. So all the fraction bar is, is a division symbol. So we have 72, sorry, 75 over 2 divided by 100 over 1. We keep change, we flip. We keep the first one. We change the sign, we flip the second one. We're going to multiply straight across. So we have 75 over 200. Because it ends with a 5 and a 0, we can actually divide by 5. You can divide by 5 uh, five times. Because that's 75 and 200, we can actually divide by 25. And when we divide by 25, we're left with 3 over 8. Let's convert a percent to a decimal. Drop the percent sign and move the decimal point two places to the left. So we're going to write each percent in decimal form. So right now, the decimal point is right there. So what we do is we move it two times. The reason why we move it two places is because that's the hundredth place. Hundredth place is point blank blank it's that second point in our per, or in our decimal so we move it twice and we get 0. 0.41 all right so 6.7 percent so where the decimal is we just move it twice one two we need a placeholder so since we need a placeholder we just put our little placeholder so we get 0 
So right now, for 120%, the decimal is right there. So we move it twice, and we get 1.2. Finding percentage of a dinner bill. I went to a dinner where they were running a fundraiser for Orlando Zebra Coalition. On this particular day, 30% of every purchase was being donated to Zebra. Our check was 125.49. How much will be donated? So, first let's bring out how much we spent. So we spent $125.49, and then it says 30% of every purchase is going to go to Zebra. We never actually work with percentages, so we're going to switch this over to a decimal. So that's 0 .30. You could just say 0 .3. Same thing. So it's saying if I spent $125.49 and 0.3 of it is going to Zebra, we're going to multiply. When we multiply by 0.3, we get 37.647. Since we're talking about money, we're going to round this to money, so 37.65. Because if we look over, that's a 7. Since that's a 7, we round up. A store at an outlet mall is offering 70% off a jacket that is, that is sell priced at $59. What was the original price of the jacket? All right, always bring out your given. So the given So the given is that the price was reduced by 70% and the discounted price was So because the sell was 70% off, that means the sell price is 30% of the original price, because that's how much left over to get to 100%. We don't know the original price. We don't know it. When you don't know something in math, we say it's x. So we don't know it, we say it's x. So we're saying that it's 0.3 of the original price because 30% remember that's 0 0.30 which we just say is 0 0.3 so it's 0.3 of the original price which we don't know which is x but we do know that when we bought that 0 0.3 of the original price it cost $59 If we clean this up, we have 0.3x equals 59. We divide by 0.3, and we get x equals 196.67. So that's actually how much the jacket cost. A real estate developer is looking for investors to help fund a new condo complex. They promise a 145% return on investment in four years. If you are interested in investing $30,000 and the developer follows through, how much money will you get back in four years? All right, so the first thing we need to do is understand what they're talking about. So the promise was, if we invested 
we get 145% in return. So 145% of the investment, that's what we're promised. So what does that actually mean? So what this means is you're going to get an investment back plus the 145 percent. So our second step is to calculate. So in order to calculate, we need to put 145 percent, first of all, into a decimal. So 145 percent, we move the decimal place twice. That'll be 1.45. 1 1.45 1 is 145 percent. So our return, it stands for our investment because that's how much we're putting in. And then we get plus 145%. So we plus 145% our investment. So what we do is we have our investment, that's how much we put in. Then it says that if we invest, they promised that we'll get our investment back and 145% of that back. So our investment was 30000 And then our returned promise was 145%, which is 1.45. So we get 30,000 plus 30,000 times 1.45 is 43,500. And we'll get 73,500 back. Computing percent increase and decrease. When some quantity gets larger, we calculate the percent increase using the formula. Percent increase is the amount of the increase over the original price, and that's the same thing as the new amount minus the original amount over the original amount. If it gets smaller for a percent decrease, we put the amount of decrease over the original amount. It's the same thing, just new amount minus original amount over original amount. In each case, the result is a percentage in decimal form. Percent increase and decrease are also sometimes called percent change or relative change. In effort to show solidarity with her workers, the CEO offers to take 300000 per year pay cut. Last year, her salary, salary was $11 million. Find the percent decrease in pay. All right, so first we need to find her new salary because she took a pay decrease. So her new salary, she was originally making 11 million, and then she took a $300,000 cut. So minus 300,000. So we get her new uh, salary at 10,700,000. And she took a pay cut she decreased so we're going to use this formula so 
So the pay decrease is the decrease over the old salary. So our decrease, what she's making now, or what she took the cut, was 300000 And her old salary was $11 million. All right, then we get 0 0.02727 but we want to find the percent decrease so to do the percent when we were going the other way when we were going percent to decimal we moved it twice that's the same thing as dividing by 100. So the opposite of that because we want to go from decimal to percent we're going to multiply by 100. If you multiply by 100, this is going to give you a percent. So we multiply by 100, and you'll get 2.72727272727. Let's go ahead and round that to two decimal points. So if you round this to two decimal points, it'd be 2.73. We round it up because if we look over, that's a 7, so we're going to round up. So she took a 2.73% pay cut. A refrigerator has a regular price of eleven $1 hundred dollars and forty nine or sorry, uh, one thousand one hundred forty nine dollars at Home Depot and one thousand two hundred nineteen dollars at Lowe's. Home Depot is offering fifteen percent off, but Lowe's is offering two hundred dollars off if ordered online and picked up. What's the better option? All right, so we have two places to go to: Home Depot and Lowe's. Let's figure out Home Depot first. So Home Depot, the original price was. $1,149. But they say that Home Depot is 15% off. So we know 15% is actually 0.15. All right, so let's figure out how much that is going to cost if it's 15% off. So 1,149 times 0.15. And we get $172.35. So that's how much we take the discount for. So let's figure out how much we're paying. So $1,149 minus $172.35. And we get $976.65. So at Home Depot, this fridge is going to be $976.65. Now let's talk about Lowe's. At Lowe's, the same fridge is $1,219, and it told us that it's $200 off. So if it's $200 off, we just subtract, no big deal. So let's go ahead and subtract. Our original price is $1,219 minus $200 that is off, and we get $1,019. So if we look, Home Depot is the better deal. So you should buy this fridge at Home Depot. You're going to save like 30, 40 bucks. Evaluate the legitimacy of claims based on percents. Evaluating claims based on percents. Imagine you read an advertisement for a new energy drink called Boost X. The advertisement claims Boost X can increase your energy by 50%. As a savvy consumer and a student of math, you want to evaluate the legitimacy of this claim. Okay, so energy levels, you can't go above 100%. No one's ever at 100%, but that's your max energy levels. All right, so let's say energy is E. So then it told us that we're increasing energy levels. 
we don't know the increase, but it's being increased by 50%. We don't know our original level, but we're increasing it by 50%. We know 50 is going to be 0.5. So let's figure out our new energy level. So our new level is we start off with whatever energy we have because it says it'll boost our energy by 50%. We don't know the energy right we have right now. So we have our energy. We're not sure where it is. But it told us that if we drink this energy drink, it's going to boost it by 50%. So it's going to boost it our energy by 50%. Since they're both E, we can actually add them together. So that's 1E plus 0.5E, that's 1.5E. So 1.5 is 150%. So what we're actually saying is that we'll have 150% of the original energy. Now, that, the claim boost x, boost x and increase your energy by 50%, it's mathematically accurate if it means your energy level would be at 150% which of what it originally was. This increase represents a significant boost in energy if the product delivers as advertised. So basically, it gives you that big boost of energy. Really, we did this example just to set up variables and combine like terms and stuff like that.